When the Bible says that the, the serpent was crafty, it speaks about being sensible. And I want to dwell on there. The, the serpent was sensible. The serpent had a good sense of reason. The serpent was rational. The serpent was wise. The serpent was prudent. It showed a lot of care. There's a reason as to why the serpent went to Eve. The serpent was careful. And you see something that I've learned and I'll continue to mix all this is um, Eve was in an environment where it's, it was about the goodness. Everything that she saw was good. Everything that she saw in her mind, in her thinking, in her wildest imagination, everything was good until the serpent came who was sensible, practical, and then the serpent went to Eve. Baby girl. <laughs> um, and then the serpent, I, I just want to picture, I'm trying to picture, I'm in the garden of Eden and I'm watching them as in a snake having a conversation with a woman. Um, I'm, I'm baby girl um, as in I can see you've enjoyed all this food as in you've enjoyed you've enjoyed everything but how comes you're not eating there how comes as in God has given you everything God has given you everything as in look at look at all these trees Look at all these trees. Look at the fruit. You've tasted that one. You've eaten that one. In fact, um, you, if you mix all these fruits, you can have like a pudding. And wow, um, I don't put sugar cane. As in, I, I'm just trying to, this is my own mind. Because um, and, and the serpent, that's how he was. Um, hey, I know, I know you have you have your man, but let me not come now. Let me not come now. Hey, by the way, you should have some time with your man. And then the serpent goes. That's being crafty. And then the following day. Um, so how how was it yesterday? Um, did your man even say good night? Hey, men, men, how? As in, okay, there are no other men, but hmm? oh, that's okay. So. Um, so if so how was your day um, nee, 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 nee. okay and after they finished the conversation the snake said oh by the way good night you're getting how crafty the serpent was and another time the serpent will just go for me I, I, I believe that the serpent didn't take just one day it was a process it was a process. It was a process. And maybe the serpent was like the other day. Um, um, so how does it feel like to be hugged? As in, yesterday I was just watching by the window you and your man. Mm, okay, you don't have curtains because there's no one else to watch you. So um, I, I just saw you embrace her and it was so lovely. How does it feel like? And then the serpent, woo. <laughs> As in, slowly by slowly, I'm trying to look for my notes where I've written the exact words. And then you see the serpent in the midst of all this truth, he would throw some questions of doubt, some seeds of discord, some seeds of doubt. And I want to explain Genesis chapter 3 verse 13. But before I get there, um, um, you see, the serpent was questioning Eve slowly by slowly. It was a process. And you see, this is how things happen. Um, leo, leo nakomulika. <laughs> In a good way. Um, 
when we have like an argument, I, I always say conflicts, love does not negate conflict. Conflict is part of growth. <laughs> they relate very well. And, and I remember before we got married, when we would have an argument, Pia Pastor and Aguingi, um, uh, and, and when we would argue, I would withdraw myself. But for her, she would want us to sort that. She would want us, manze, tuonge sai, 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 mini kwa pana, tuonge after three days. But slowly I'm starting to learn that she understand or she understands Eve's position. Because the snake will come and start to sow seeds of doubt. I wanted to share something and I'm trying to find it. I can't get it. But um, someone said that the snake he was slow, he was stealthy and patient. He just needed a small corner in the heart of Eve. Just a small corner, just a small corner where you start thinking about what he said. A small corner of your mind and your soul. And this is where now the snake, he pokes incised hole in your faith and then he waits patiently for it to completely deflate. And for her and for me also, when I spend away from seclusion, this is where now the serpent comes. Ama maybe you guys are not supposed to be together. Ama maybe manze you are say ah ah. Ama manze umtukane. Au je mtukane mtukane. Ama msho wendo nani wendo the man. Una check how Satan comes. And you see he sows that seed and it's like he's poking and then he sits back and waits for you to take the action and then he comes again. You see how that conversation in the garden of Eden was and after Eve had all those conversations, you see our thoughts are seeds and the more we tend the seeds or our thoughts, we tend those seeds they become, they, they take root and then they become fruit. And the fruit is actually the actions of the things that we do as we entertain the thoughts. Imagine Eve, how did she get to the place, and I'm not judging her, how did she get to the place that she will take the fruit and eat? And then at Abatia Adam. And from that place, their eyes were opened their eyes were opened not to see the goodness of God, not to see the environment that she was surrounded in, not to see the things that God had given them. And you see, in the Garden of Eden, God had actually given them everything that they needed. And God was not hiding something that was good from them in the tree of life, and the tree of knowledge and good of e of evil, no knowledge, tree of knowledge of good and evil, but God had already given them everything. So you see, when Eve ate of that tree, their eyes were opened, and this is why we see sexual immorality. She started seeing all the bad things. She started seeing the bad side of Adam. You know, the, it was so funny that they were in the, in, the, in the Garden of Eden for the longest time and they were naked and unashamed until they ate the fruit. How comes you're vulnerable to someone until you commit sin? As in, it was, it, it was so bad that Eve started seeing all these things and that was the beginning of doubting the goodness 
of God. That was the beginning of us seeing all these things. And by the way, all these things was in the mind. And because of that, scientists say that we have 60,000 to 80,000 thoughts a single day. And out of the 60,000 to the 80,000 thoughts, 85% of those thoughts are actually negative thoughts as a result of what happened in the Garden of Eden. You want to have an opportunity to go for a job and you're like, ah, Manze, I don't think I'll be able to get that job. This was the environment that Eve was in. It makes someone to start doubting the goodness of God. You start seeing God as a bad God. You start seeing God as a God who was hiding things. And you see something when you fall into sin. Guilt says that I made a mistake. Shame says that I am the mistake. You start seeing yourself as the mistake. You start seeing yourself as being born from a family that is, that is not privileged. You start seeing yourself as someone who doesn't deserve the good things. You start seeing yourself as someone who's a loser. You start seeing yourself because you have planted all these seeds and they've become fruit. There's a story by a lady called Sarah Jakes, and she was saying, um, I, I believe we know Sarah Jakes, a daughter to Bishop T.D. Jakes, and Sarah Jakes in her book, Woman Evolve, she was saying that when they were in a small church in West, in Charleston, West Virginia, she was saying that the church was so small that it was like a family church. They knew everyone, and she was saying she would sit next to the pastor who is the father and the mother. She will sit next to them until one day they moved to Dallas, Texas. She was saying that the first Sunday, the church was so full that they had 1,500 guests. And from that Sunday, you know what happened? She started sitting at the back. There were um, pastor friends. There were other people that would come. And you see, when the church was so small, she knew that she was, she was loved. She knew everything that was good. She knew that my mother cares for me. She knew that my father loves me. My father will provide for me. But when she started sitting at the back, she will see the father come to talk to people and the mother having people to talk to after service and all those things. And it started planting seeds of doubt, the serpent started planting seeds of doubt and she started feeling, hey, Manze, my parents don't love me anymore. She started saying, ah, I, I, I don't think I, I, I am respected. I don't think that I deserve to be here. How can I sit there? Look at this other person. They don't even have money. They don't even know my father, but they are sitting in front. And these were things that were planted in her mind. And out of that, you see, when, when, when you are at a place where you're doubting all this thing, the enemy checks in and he starts to sow seeds of discord. He starts to sow seeds where you will doubt the goodness of God. And she got to a place whereby any place that she will find affirmation, she will run to that place. Any place that she will be told that you are beautiful and you are good looking and all these other good things, she will find her refuge there. And in her early teens, she, got, she became pregnant because of the seeds of discord. You see how such things can make us to get out of fellowship. Such things can make us to even shut people. God created us for relationships. God created us for fellowship. And we live in a world whereby you've been hurt one time and your, your environment becomes an environment whereby you are like, ah, all men are dogs. I can't date, I can't date again. Let me live for myself. Let me allow me to enjoy myself and 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 let me live. Let me let me enjoy myself. I, I don't think I will be able to date. I don't think I will be able to see another man or to see another woman because the seeds of doubt had been sold in your mind. I've done counseling and there's a theory that is called um, rational behavior, rational emotive behavior theory, REBT. And they say that, let me just read it, um, let me just read it verbatim. They say that human beings are born with the potential of both rational and irrational thinking. 
they have a tendency for self-destruction, avoidance of thoughts, procrastination, repetition of mistakes, intolerance, self-blame, and avoidance of actualizing growth potentials. And we develop emotional and behavioral difficulties when we mistake simple preferences like desire for love, approval for success, and etc. You see, when Eve sinned, for me, I believe that was the beginning of FOMO because the enemy wanted Eve to partake of the fruit so that she would not miss out on the things that were happening on the other side. And FOMO has spread out today like a, like a wildfire and it's killing people. And now we are finding that we are doing things because we fear missing out. They say that the word FOMO was coined in 1994 and there was a study that was done upon university students and 9 out of 10 said that Manzewa eat not for FOMO but because of FOMO I must have a phone I must struggle to get bundles I must do all those things but you see what FOMO is doing FOMO is planting the seeds the seeds of discord planting the seeds of the badness of things and, and, and we get to a place whereby our experience make us question whether God is good FOMO wants us to grab things so fast. FOMO never wants us to go through the process that God is teaching us, that God is equipping us, that God is shaping us to be great people, that God is actually walking us through every stage. And each and every person is unique and differently created. Each and every person has their own destiny. But the problem with FOMO is we are focusing on our lives on other people. And something about FOMO is you might be competing with another person, but that person is not even competing with you. We kila soko kwa, hey manze, hey umsambe bae vya tuziko, hey pia miwacha ni bae yoke atu. Unakimbe unachukua loan. Kidogo, kidogo, hey unase, hey manze abe bae ingine, wow, 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 wow. Unaishia unachukua loan. I leave you alone. <laughs> you see how Genesis 3 and Genesis 3.13, let me now explain that. When Eve is saying that the snake deceived me and I ate. It comes from the Hebrew word nosho, which, me, which means to lead astray mentally. To lead astray mentally. To delude and I'll explain to delude. It means to make someone believe something that is not true. And have you seen the things that are happening in our world today? The enemy is making what is true not to be true. He's making you think that marriages don't work. He's making you to think that there is nothing like heaven or hell. He's making you think that you are your own boss. The enemy is making you think that the life that you live, you don't need God. The enemy is making you shut people away. And no man can succeed by their own Look at the life of Jesus. He himself had 12 people that would help him to accomplish that which God called him to do. And also, no show means to lead astray mentally in the mind or morally. And it speaks about to seduce, to beguile, and to deceive. To deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that's not true. And this is for their own personal gain. And you see, most of us, we are living in a time whereby we've allowed the snake to come to speak to us. We've allowed the snake to come and sow seeds of discord. 
we've allowed the snake and you know the snake nowadays is also in the form of other Christians the snake is also in the form of movies the snake is also in the form of many many things the snake and you know it's so easy to condemn Eve but you yourself has, have been given the same opportunity do not partake of this fruit and it's so funny that many people even today they are after the tree of knowledge of good and evil you want to know the truths but god is saying i have already given you the truth and the truth is the word of god even as i come to end this 1st Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 54 to 58 there the bible speaks of adam and then it speaks about the last adam the first adam died with the bride that was eve the first adam died with the bride the last adam there's no adam the last adam is jesus christ the last adam is jesus christ and he died for the bride and the bride is the church the bride is you and me and is bringing a new script whether even though um we are doubting um and, and and you know we get to question the goodness of god when 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 we are going through a difficult time when we are fighting like a disease or or, or we are facing an abuse be it emotional and all those forms of abuse be it a time where we are burying a loved one we 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 question the goodness of god but jesus christ as the last adam he came with a different script and he is saying that all these things all things all all things all things you've lost a loved one you've lost a job you've lost this particular thing you've lost all these things but all these things god is working them god is working them for the good for the good of them that love the lord he wants to shift our minds he wants to shift your mind you who have been hurt broken you who have tried something and every time is not panning out and your environment has become that which man said there's no way i'm going to make it jesus is telling you and jesus is giving you a new script as the last adam he's the final adam he's point, pointing you to to a place he's he's using you he wants to use you and he's using you and he's speaking today and he is saying that all things all things all things whether you went through a difficult time whether you lost your job whether you lost your parents whether you lost a friend whether you lost anything all these things are going to work out for the good of them that love the lord and jesus christ still loves you jesus christ still wants to do great things in you he just wants you to get out of that environment where the enemy or the serpent open the world of impossibilities the world whereby he's telling you you're not going to go to school he's telling you you're not going to get a job he's telling you you're not going to excel he's telling you you're not going to get out of this situation this place that you are stuck in but Jesus Christ today he is writing a different script he wants to point us to the goodness of God he He wants to point us to the place that we are victorious. He wants to point us to the place that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. He wants to do he wants us to do great things because he's pointing us to the hands of the Father. He's pointing us to the place that we will write books. He's pointing us to the place that we will excel. He's pointing us to the place that we will rise above the storms of life. He's pointing us to the place whereby the thing that you are struggling with, you are not that because your identity belongs to none other than Jesus Christ your identity is in him it's not about what you're doing it's not about what you've done it's not about what you're going through it's not about what, what people have called you but it's about what he is calling you to he's calling you from a place of doubt from a place of despair from a place of discouragement from a place of loss from a place where nothing makes sense and 
is calling you from a place to a place of abundance to a place that you will rise up on wings as eagles to a place where you will rise up and you will do great things to a place where you are a leader to a place whereby you will not look down on yourself but you will look and you will see that you are surrounded you are surrounded by heaven you are surrounded by the king of kings you will go into places places that you don't even apply for places that you don't even qualify for as according to what man says but Jesus is going to take you to places as long as you get a mind shift as long as you get to the place that you know that God is able that he's giving you a new script that is taking you to greater heights that is opening doors of possibilities doors of greatness doors where you will look back and say it is good that I was afflicted it is good that no one supported me it is good that I went through the loss it is good that I went through discouragement it is good that I went through a time of lack because I have learned that God still provides that God still lives that God is able that God is able that God is mighty there is nothing that is too difficult for the Lord there is nothing that the Lord cannot do just open your mouth and start worshiping him just open your mouth and start exalting him because he deserves all the praise he is still speaking life or into dark situations he is still speaking life into dark situations oh king of glory we are praying in the name of Jesus oh the matchless name of Jesus I am speaking life upon the young people I am praying oh king of glory those that have gone through rejection rejection no more they are embraced by you oh God I am praying for them oh king of glory that have been in a desert or a wilderness for so long oh God that they say nothing is going to come out of them we are speaking life right now oh God we are speaking according to the name of Jesus the last Adam the one that has that the one that has our lives in his hands father may you lead father may you guide father may you strengthen father may you provide for you are speaking good things father I am praying for them that have gone through a heartbreak after heartbreak oh God until they've planted in their minds an environment where oh king of glory the fruit is that they will never marry the fruit is they now no one will ever love them but today oh God you are starting to speak there they are fearfully and wonderfully made oh God that they are beautiful according to your word that father they will enjoy themselves they will celebrate themselves they will go to hotels and treat themselves because God you were speaking goodness God you were showing them the good side of you God you were revealing yourself to them in the name of Jesus I am praying for you who is here today and you've gone through a difficult time after difficult time you were living in a place that you yourself you were wallowing and having a pity party today I am saying that that day is surely going to come that God is writing a new script that God is able that God God will do something new in your life that God will elevate you just trust the God in the process the God that is able to get you to a place of mind shift to give you a paradigm shift that you will never be the same again thank you Lord thank you Lord still in that mood with we, we, we just praying you're here and you say I just want to give my life to Jesus just lift up your hand and we are going to pray you're saying you're giving your life to Jesus just lift up your hand so that I can see and we are going to pray thank you Lord The story of Eve has taught me